I'm speaking about uh, philosophy of law, and last time I examined to some extent uh, over the, over Justice Holmes and his idea of the path of the law. Um, it's very interesting how he summed up. But now I would like to uh, talk about uh, his predecessor. Um, I mean that uh, uh, Justice Cardozo, uh, Benjamin. Uh, Cardozo, uh, who actually, when Oliver Holmes um, resigned from the court, when he retired, uh, Justice Cardozo was uh, appointed to the Supreme Court. Um, Justice Cardozo, I'm just going to give a little short interview. He's uh, uh, He was a Sephardic, uh, he comes from a Sephardic Jewish family, a uh, very interesting uh, person. He uh, wrote very interesting legal theorist. He was not really that long on the Supreme Court, but he had some uh, very fascinating, um, interesting interpretations of the law. Um, he wrote this book called The Nature of Judicial Process, which is very interesting combining, talking about a philosophy of law, combining uh, many different aspects of society in order to uh, to have a meaningful uh, laws and meaningful um, uh, rules that would guide society and they have to be based on soci uh, sociological, psychological, mostly soci sociological processes. But just for this introduction I would like to talk about um, a decision that he made and, and that this decision decision made um, it became kind of groundwork for the negligence law or tort law in United States. Um, which it became a study case and uh, it laid some some of the foundations. It's called Pazgraf versus uh, Long Island Railroad. I believe it was decided in 1926, if I correct. I'm, do not quote me on the year, but Pazgraf versus Long Island Railroad was um, Mrs. Pazgraf, who this woman who was at a railroad station. Um, the train and there was a train that was pulling out and there were guards that were guarding the station and there was a man who was running to get on the train now you know of course today we wouldn't see people trying to run and hop on the train but in, in 1920s you know it was common so uh, this this guy who was running to get on the train the security guards the guards helped them to get on the train and in turn as they helped him he had some kind of fire, fireworks in his back and it fell, I don't know exactly what was how it was made then or whatever, but the fireworks fell and it was a dynamite uh, thing and it exploded next to the this coin machine and it hit the coin machine, ex hit Mrs. Palgraf and she was injured. Um, now. What Mrs. Pazgraf, she got injured and she went to sue the Long Island Railroad station for negligence. Uh, um, and the case, the case goes, um, the case is very interesting because it has that initiation into tort law, negligence. Um, it, it does not talk about, I think, the cause, causation in fact and approximate, approximate Cause kind of was developed a little later, but um, um, one principle that Justice Cardozo, in his decision um, that he developed, was uh, based on predictability. Uh, so the decision was that um, could the guards have predicted? that this man had a fireworks in his bag and that that would fall and injure. So the predictability, the, it says, it, it, could they have predicted that this was gonna happen? And in Justice Cordozo's argument, he says, no, they couldn't have predicted. They had no idea that this guy, by helping me in the court, that, that is going to lead to all this uh, that is going to lead dynamite exploding, uh, hitting the uh, coin machine and coin machine injuring uh, Mrs. Pausgraf. So he decided in that case, he decided against Mrs. Pausgraf. But the predictability and causation, in fact, played 
a, a major part. Meaning, uh, if could you predict that your actions would cause certain harm by doing action A that is going to cause person B to get injured uh, and all that. So if there is no predictability, that means uh, in fact there is no causation in fact. Meaning, we the if you cannot predict it, if you could not predict that somebody is going to incur harm by your actions, therefore you're not reliable for damages to that person. So th that builds a interesting uh, factor that starts to develop into tort law. Um, but and then there's another decision that which this is very interesting is McPherson versus I think Buick Buick the car company uh, where uh, the, the dealer that was selling the Buick cars said well you know we didn't you know um, they wanted to sue Buick not the dealer and the, the law according back then was that you couldn't sue the third party you couldn't sue um, the Buick because it's they they were not the one who sold the car but it was the, the dealer but they said well wait a second you build the car so we can sue you um, that's that is another interesting case which I will talk about a little more but this is a kind of introduction to the predictability and the negligence or a tort law that um, we talk about and uh, that well I will discuss further uh, but for, for right now, I do not want to uh, go, and by the way, this is only a discussion, I'm not a, I am not, again, once, once again, I want to clarify that I'm not an attorney, I study this stuff because I like to walk, and it's fascinating, but um, I just want to make sure that everybody understands that. So, Justice Cordozo, um, I will talk about his, um, next time when I come on, I will talk about his the nature of a legal process, which is very interesting, and some of the stuff that I got from his approach to the law. Now, I'm, I'm still kind of developing this, this based on philosophy of law. And uh, uh, philosophy of law is that w what should be counted as a law? Should we have morality influence in it? Or should we have uh, like predictability? So, in this case, like Pals Graph, we Long Island Railroad is that uh, how could we say that um, they could not predict it that by helping this guy get on the court, uh, get on the train, um, the Mrs. Pals graph is going to get hurt. Now you could debate that question. You could say that it is predictable that, but could they have predicted that this man was carrying a fireworks in his? bag and the bag falling down hitting the coin machine and coin machine injuring the uh, Mrs. Pau's graph. Could they have predicted? Now I think that's a far-fetched argument to make but I will discuss a little more on the case and his approach to the philosophy of law and jurisprudence. Alright that's it for right now.